Hi, welcome back to Shawnee Hills Workshop. Today, we're gonna to install solar panels on the DIY off-road overland camper. So let's get this thing pulled into the workshop and get to it. I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Boge RV. They sent me this 170 watt solar panel and an MPPT solar charge controller with remote display. All the power for my camper is in one spot behind this panel. That's where my battery is, my DC charge controller, as well as my distribution blocks and other things. So the first step is we're gonna take this panel off. So now that we have the panel off, you can see I've got my deep cycle battery here. This is a, an Extreme Max. I think it's made by Duracell. I believe it was 170 amp hours. I can't remember and the label's on the other side and I'm not going to take it out. I've got my charge controller for my battery while we're driving. The alternator will charge the battery for me. And then up here I have my distribution block for my ground. And then I also have the fuse box, the back side of it. The front side is in the sleeping quarters and um, it's got all my fuses. It's got the switches for all the lights on the inside and outside, with the exception of the galley here. That's controlled by this switch. And then it also has breakers if I wanted to add uh, 120 volt. Right now, I only have the inverter here for 120 volt, but my fuse box actually has an inverter built into it, and I can put breakers in there and run separate circuits for 120 volt. Now that we got this panel off, I need to find a spot to mount the charge controller and a place to mount the remote meter, which will probably be on this panel. This thing has a really large heat sink on the back of it. It looks really well made. Now that the charge controller is installed, the next step is to install the solar panel. Now I could just screw this right down to the roof and then silicone that, but I don't want to take any chance of leaks. So I'm going to build a roof rack that the solar panel will mount to and that bolts into the side of the roof. So even if it does leak, it won't come into the trailer. So I've got the solar panel laid on my bench and it came from the factory with these plugs here and I don't have any plugs that match it. I'm not familiar with what this is called, even to look it up online to search it. And I really just don't want to wait to get them. Um, also, the wires aren't long enough to get the connections inside the camper for the way I'm going to be installing it. And I really want any um, quick disconnect inside the camper, not outside in the weather. So I'm going to solder on a uh, piece of wire with the type of connector I have and get it into the camper to where this disconnect is inside the camper.
So if you watched my interior build video, you'll know that the interior wiring for the lights in the ceiling come to this corner right here. So I'm gonna feed around the roof and up through the uh, tent and then come in the exact same spot where the power for the roof is and then feed wires all the way down to my battery area. All right, so I've got the charge controller hooked up. It was really, really simple. You'd literally just take the positive and negative from the panel and attach it to the terminals, and then the positive and negative from your battery and attach it to the terminals. And then there's a Molex plug to plug the remote meter in it. And it looks like I've got 12.1 volts right now on my battery. Actually, uh, it's giving me a warning because of the low voltage. I uh, left my lights on in here all night long last night. I had the lid closed since I took the shock down, forgot that I'd turn them off and, or turned them on and they ran all night long. So now I'm going to uh, clean up this installation. I've got, um, I know it looks a little bad in here, but uh, a lot of the wires that are just stretched in here and not neatly organized are for these two switches and this 12 volt outlet. And then also this auxiliary power that I have here. If I was borrowing somebody else's solar charger or a solar panel and um, charger controller, I could plug it in right here and charge my battery. Um, but now I'll just have an, an extra auxiliary port that I'll leave there. I need to mount the meter on the panel. And I'm also thinking about pulling out my DC charge controller for when I'm driving and mounting it on here as well. So we'll wrap that up and we'll be done. And just like that, we're done. Got my uh, remote meter plugged in there. It all looks nice and clean and all buttoned up. Now all I gotta do is use it. Now, I'm not 100% done because the solar panel is not bolted down, but it's not bolted down because I still got to take the roof rack back off, paint it, and then put it back up. So I'll just unplug the uh, solar panel at the plant plug that I put inside the camper, pull it down, paint the roof rack, put it back up. Speaking of the roof rack, next week I'm going to have a video up in depth showing how I built the roof rack. So if you're interested in building one for your trailer or for your vehicle, it will show you how easy it is to do. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, hit thumbs up. If you didn't like it, hit thumbs down. But tell me why you didn't like it so I can do better. Thanks for watching.